And another video from San Armin and Yal Denbyshire. Just left the churchyard behind me, uh, which is a point of interest. See the first video. And heading downhill out of the village, eastwards, to Toman Aviadra. Steve, thanks for your comments about my pronunciation. I like to have a go. At least I don't say Landudno and Langolan and that kind of stuff. I have a go. <laughs> Always feel free to encourage my correct correct pronunciation. Now, heading down the lane, east out of the village, to a large natural limestone outcrop. Um, the area is full of them. You go walking uh, any distance, and there's ridges and mounds of limestone, trees, moss, all really vibey, really connecting places. But here on the eastern side, there's something which Julian Cope in his book, The Modern Antiquarian, uh, he says is, is a goddess feature, a landscape spiritual feature. Yes, it was and is a very large natural limestone outcrop. Yes, with the Norman invasion and their innovation of the Mott, the mound and bailey, the enclosure, castle, Mott and bailey. The site was made into a Mott and Bailey castle. The Bailey's long gone and any remains and buildings on top of it are long gone. As we're walking along, I'll be dropping in footage I took yesterday afternoon when we arrived and we're just going to have a quick look around uh, now. On the north side here, you have the river clearly making a defensive line of some sort and a very sheer face of the limestone outcrop. And here on the eastern side of the mound, da -da -da, you've got very clear evidence of the defensive ditch. But you can see that way, I'll drop some other footage in over top of this, but there is definitely a clear, broad, sweeping ditch. So thinking about it, if the mound had any defensive capabilities with this ditch, surely it must have been some, something like a palisaded fence going around this uh, eastern and southern side because the western and northern side is a drop off next to the river. Uh, having this side, this ditch flooded just doesn't make sense. Heading along the bridleway southwards, loosely in the direction of Flandekla, um, there are a number of what appear to be standing stones, but are they standing stones or just fortuitous chunks of limestone which have been erected to be part of walls? Were they once proper standing stones which had walls built around them and now the walls are falling down? There is a legit Bronze Age barrow in the field not far up there behind me, out of sight because of the uh, field boundary and the hedging. I took a good couple of photos yesterday, drop in. So before it gets too dark, I'll have a quick peep to the top of the mound. So I'm now on top of Toman Aviadra, large flat area here on top. Any structure within it must have been fairly small, um, so not looking probably a very big settlement at all, if it was used as a defensive settlement. However, we are raised within the natural amphitheatre of the landscape all the way around. You've got mountain tops and hilltops near and far. So if this were to be a ritual site, it's very well placed for it. Um, got the half moon just over there. So it does have a sense of presence and of place and prominence within the landscape. Which, yes, makes sense defensively. But from a ritual spectacle point of view, also makes sense. We'd need to be thinking about lines of alignment across the landscape. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have any definite answers for things here at Flanarman in Yarl, whether it's the churchyard or here at Termin of Hydra. 
but uh, it does pose a lot of questions. You also need to add in just behind me here, the other side of the road behind the mill is a huge cave in which were found a number of bones uh, of different animals. So the site was certainly in use in prehistory. It's not without precedent. So, hmm, interesting.